Hello everyone, it's Lindsay and it is Word Study Wednesday. So I'm coming at you with a word focus card from Open Journey. Um, this is a new series that I have started here on my channel. So I will link the playlist down below where you can catch the past videos. We've done several cards so far. And so if you wanna see how I did those past ones, you can check out those videos down below. But we're moving right along to the next card in the stack of these word focus cards. I will have everything linked down below for you guys. And just heads up, it looks like the Open Journey shop is back open um, up from vacation, so you can place orders now. So uh, again, I will have everything linked down below for you guys. These cards are amazing. So today we're working on the word Father. And as always, Ingrid has several Bible verses for us to study. And I took about an hour to go through all of these words, or I'm sorry, all of the verses um, in relation to the word Father. And there are so many studies you could do just within these verses um, again and again and again um, the the intimacy and the complexity of the Trinity the God the Father, Jesus, the Son, the Holy Spirit is all wrapped up in many of these verses. And so uh, it was really interesting to kind of see that play out through these verses as we look at um, the word Father. So um, out of all the verses that I picked, I did go ahead and go with John 14, 10, which um, this is Jesus speaking. He says, don't you believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words I speak to you, I do not speak on my own. The Father who lives in me does his works. And so here we can see just that intimate relationship between Christ and God. Um, and that, you know, in fact, they are one in the same, but also being two different entities. That is the mystery of the Trinity <laughs> that we could study for every and ever and ever and still not fully grasp um, how that works. But um, it was really interesting to dive in and look at some commentaries um, and just see this reoccurring theme of, you know, to know God and to have a better relationship with God, we must know Christ. And it's through Christ that we can even have any knowledge of who God is. Uh, he was the living embodiment of God here on earth. And so uh, it was really fun to kind of go through all these verses. Um, just for reference, Acts 13, 33 um, is actually, within that verse is referencing Psalm 2-7, which she has listed. So uh, I would definitely encourage you to go through and look at all of the verses on these cards. Um, it does take a little bit longer, a little more time, um, but it's really neat to see just how much thought Ingrid puts into um, the verses that she chooses. So you know, Father is a pretty basic uh, definition. And so when I went into the Blue Letter Bible app, there was the Thayer's uh, Greek lexicon definition says nourisher, protector, and upholder. So I went with that rather than the, just the standard, you know, parental figure, father, basic definition, um, because I really think this describes God the Father. He's our nourisher, the protector, the upholder of everything and everyone, um, you know, in all of creation. And so uh, I thought that that was a good fit. And then some of the commentary here, so it broke it down, um, father in relationship to, you know, I guess different relationships um, that the father could have, whether it be with creation, with Jesus, with us. Um, and so this one here said, the father of Jesus Christ, as one whom God has united to himself in the closest bond of love and intimacy, made acquainted with his purposes, appointed to explain and carry out among men the plan of salvation, and made to share also in his own divine nature. I love that. It's going on to further describe that relationship between God the Father and Jesus the Son. Um, but as I was studying this word Father, it kept just, I kept thinking about our first word that we did in this series, which is the word adopted. Um, and it is through Christ that we are adopted as children of God, which puts us having some of these same um, qualities that Jesus has in relation to uh, God. You know, even just carrying out among men the plan of salvation. Well, Christ fulfilled that plan, um, and, and it is through him that we can have salvation, but now we can carry on and share, you know, the gospel and what it means to be saved with others, and so we have that power through Christ, through God, and so being adopted children of God, he is now our father in the same way that he is the father to Jesus, and so it just was really neat to see um, just some of those connections starting to be made as I do these word studies. It's really amazing, and so I'm excited to see so many of you joining in and doing word studies each week with me as well. Um, I'm really excited for this series, so uh, I've gone ahead and like always, I've just typed out all my information on a separate um, card because I will be attaching that to the back of the card. Um, 
Um, I did mention in my last video that I had plans um, to coil bind these at the top, but I did not leave myself enough room uh, to do that. So that won't be happening. <laughs> I will have to figure out a different way to display these. So that will be coming soon, but Let's go ahead and um, talk about what we'll be doing to the front of this card. Uh, and so I have pulled out a few different things. I have a big box. Let me see if I can bring it into focus here. So I have this box full of Open Journey uh, kits and products. And so I kind of went through to find some things that I hadn't used in a while. And so I came across this Come With Me uh, kit. This was actually the Lent kit. It is still available in the shop. I do have a full unboxing for this kit, so I will link it down below. Um, you can order the kit in its entirety. There's a digital option, um, but they also have like a little packet of the ephemera pieces that you can purchase um, on its own. And so I'm going to be using the washi strips from that. So these are just um, stickers and they are just all of these fun patterns and so I wanted to create kind of a collage look on the background of my card using these washi strips so rather than getting messy with paints and creating that look myself um, we're just going to cover it with these washi strips. I pulled out a few of Ingrid's florals. These are a mix and match from a variety of kits. I like to do that. Um, I've got the stamp set from the most recent uh, kit. So I will have that linked down below. Uh, I liked this here, the Lord our God, the Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, and with all your strength. And I just thought that that went well with, um, you know, the study that we've done on the word father. And I have just a few other little items that we're gonna use to embellish, but that's kind of the basic gist of where we're headed. So let me go ahead and put you guys on fast forward and we will put together this card. All right, so it's not going to take too much to put this together. I'm just going to kind of position these washi strips or stickers uh, where I want them. I'm not trying to have them line up to look like anything specific. Um, I think that they are created from one of the images in the devotional kit that's been cut apart. So you could probably piece this together to actually look like a desert scene. Um, but I'm wanting it just to be very abstract and random. It almost kind of looks to me like alcohol ink. Like if you were to create an alcohol ink background or, um, or maybe watercolor. And so super simple just to stick those down, cut off the excess, and there you go. There's tons of color on the page with little effort. Uh, it is pretty strong color, and so I want to knock it back just a little bit. So I'm running a brayer through some white gesso. Um, at this point, I realize I probably should mask off the bottom because I am trying to keep those nice and white um, so that I can see the word and the scripture. And then I'll go back in with that white gesso, um, just enough to kind of knock this back into more of like pastel colors and more of a background and kind of muted. I do go in with a baby wipe and kind of dab the gesso away with a baby wipe in some areas um, just so that there's just more interest and more texture happening um, on the background. It's not just so flat if that makes sense. So I made sure that was dry and then now I'm going to go in with this stencil. This is an older stencil from Tim Holtz. It came with like a set of stamps as well. I don't think this one is available any longer but I'll try to find something similar and link that down below for you guys. And then I'm just putting some peeled paint Distress Oxide ink through that stencil. Um, this is one of the colors that I had pulled to coordinate with this particular kit. Again, you can always find color swatches over on my blog or on my Instagram if you search hashtag Lindsay color swatches on Instagram or just look for the specific kit on my blog and I have color swatches for each kit over there. So that's what I referred to um, to pick out that green color. And then now I'm going in with these remnant rubs. Uh, again, I don't know if these are available from Tim Holtz any longer. These are old. Uh, I found them tucked into a drawer in a kit that I had not used in forever. And I was kind of going through it and there it was. So I pulled them out um, and decided to use them up. You could also use stamps. Um, there's a ton of stamps that have a similar effect. So you could do that. But these are nice because you don't have to have inks or make a mess. You just cut off a little piece that you want to use. Um, rub it. They have different tools that you could use. I'm just using a bone folder and it just transfers the image onto your project. Uh, and so it just adds, you know, a little interest. I'm not, you know, trying to pick things that go along with what I'm doing. It's just random numbers, random words, um, just to kind of add some more texture. We're going for that mixed media, just building up layers and randomness on the back of this card or, you know, in the background of this card. 
And again, these florals are pulled from a couple different uh, kits from Open Journey. They do have some digital florals also, um, if you wanna go that route. Uh, I just kind of scavenge all the flowers from all the kits <laughs> and use them up in this um, word study. So I'm putting this card in my stamp positioning tool. I am making sure that it is completely dry and coating it heavily with um, my EK Success powder tool because I'm going to do some heat embossing. And I'm not quite sure if everything's dry on here, so I'm making sure that uh, I put plenty of that powder on there so that the embossing powder only sticks to what I'm stamping. Um, this particular stamp tool is no longer available, but I will link an option down below for you guys that actually um, is kind of cool. I wish that I had the one that I'm going to link down below, but I, I've got this one. I'm making this one work, but I'll link one down for you. So I stamped that in clear sticky ink, and then now I'm adding some Kitsch Flamingo embossing glaze. I know this is like hot pink, bright pink. I was a little nervous about this because it's mostly reds and like earthy colors. Um, there's a little pink in the florals that I'm going to do, but you know, I thought I would just go for it. So I covered it in the powder. We're going to heat set this until it melts. Uh, and it is bright, but the distress glazes are uh, translucent. So they are not opaque like most embossing powders. So the background is still peeping up through that embossed area. And so it kind of mutes it a little bit, but we're going to do even more to it here. So I have a tea dye distress crayon and I'm picking up some of it with this uh, stencil brush. These are new. I just picked these up and I'm trying them. Um, so I'm picking up some of the color and then brushing it onto the edges of the card and then going over where the embossed words are. Um, and that just kind of grunges it up and makes it a little more antique. It definitely has a different look than when you use inks. I don't know how to explain it. It just... It's just a different effect than when you blend with inks. I don't know that one is better than the other. It's just, it's just different. I'm just playing around and exploring with those crayons. So now I felt like it needed, just needed a little more, a little more contrast to pull in the black elements that I'd added. So I'm adding some black acrylic ink and splattering it on here. Uh, I should have grabbed a different paintbrush I always like I have various different paint brushes for different types of splatters that one gives small splatters but it's okay um, before I stick the flowers down I decided to go in and add some white paint as well again I kind of wanted bigger splatters but I had like all my paint brushes like in the kitchen being washed <laughs> so I was just working with what I had uh, on my desk so once all that paint is dry, uh, I go ahead and stick down the florals, just creating a fun little cluster down here. Try not to cover up too much of the words that have been embossed on there. I, I know what they say, but um, I'm just trying to kind of keep those uncovered. And then we can finish off the back of the card. So I'm using some alpha and number stamps that I have in my stash. I'll have these linked down below. Um, inking that up with that peeled paint distress oxide ink that I had used through the stencil. Distant, and I'm stamping down the Strong's Concordance number um, on the back of the card. Um, and that's just so that for my own reference, I can always come back to it, but it also just adds kind of a fun element on the back there. I'm going to glue those two cards back to front and cut off any excess. And that is going to be it for the card. Pretty quick and easy. Didn't take a whole lot to get that done. Uh, I really love how each of these cards are their own unique piece, but here I'm going to show you all of the ones we've done so far together. And they all obviously have florals and they, they look like they fit together, even though they're totally different background techniques, different colors, all because I'm just, I'm loving this project. So I hope you guys are enjoying it as well. Um, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to leave those down below. Check out the description box. I will have links to everything that I used in the video today. Grab your own set of cards. Join in with us every Wednesday. Give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel if you're not already subscribed. Be sure to click on that bell notification button so you don't miss any future videos from me. And until next time, thank you so much. Bye-bye.